So apparently this diet has been around for a little while now, but it's kind of sus. Hi everyone, my name is Sonia and I'm a dietitian here to review the pagan diet. Let's talk about what it is, what it includes, what are my recommendations as a dietitian and my overall thoughts about it. Let's go. So the pagan diet is coined by Dr. Mark Hyman, who tends to give out a lot of nutritional advice, like almost too much. So what is the pagan diet? Is it paleo? More like paleo? no Because apparently the pagan diet is a combination of both paleo eating habits and vegan eating habits. What? So the pagan diet consists of 75% of low sugar fruits and non-starchy vegetables and 25% of organic, um, grass-fed, non-antibiotic or antibiotic-free meats, um, eggs, low mercury fish, and also nuts and seeds. Gluten-free grains have a cap of about half cup per meal. Legumes have a cap of one cup per day and starchy veggies have a cap of half cup per day. So what's not allowed are gluten containing grains, items with added sugar, added sugar um, in and of themselves, dairy products, and oils that are processed. So more of the generic vegetable oils, canola oils, grapeseed oils, things like that. So what are my thoughts on the pagan diet? Well, before I begin, I just want to say I'm not a fan of any sort of diet or dieting. Um, and you can understand that pretty clearly on my recent video here on the five things wrong with the dieting mindset. So please go ahead and check that out if you're interested in starting any sort of diet um, or rather before you're interested in starting any sort of diet. All the same, I know that there are people out there who are interested in these new things because they're so flashy and eye-catching. For those people, I of course still am going to do these diet reviews just to let them know what it's all about. So what are the pros? Well, Really, the main thing is that it includes a lot of fruits and a lot of vegetables. It's a good 75% focus with a kind of a minimal to moderate focus on proteins. But this has been something that experts have been recommending forever. So I guess science needs a new PR team. Our bad. So I think the pagan diet is actually a a healthier version of a paleo diet. Healthier means that you can include more whole grains and more legumes, but like just a little bit. It can also be very useful, I think, if you are currently in a very carnivorous focused or meat focused diet and you want to include more fruits and vegetables, or it might help if you want to eventually become a vegetarian or potentially a vegan, even though it still does allow a bit of meat, but again, it seems like a good transition if you just want to include more fruits and vegetables overall. So what about the cons of the pagan diet? The first real concern that I have is just the name. You're combining paleo, which is meat focused, and vegan, which doesn't really have any sort of animal products in it. And you want us to combine these two concepts together, like as in how a typical omnivorous person eats. Do we really need to call ourselves pagans? Other cons include the high price or the likely high price of this type of a diet. You have the grass fed, the organic, um, the wild caught items. A lot of people think that they're healthy or they're eating healthy because they're buying those things. But it doesn't really mean much if you're not getting overall enough nutrients from fruits and vegetables, from whole grains, if you're spending money to try and afford those specific items. Another con is that it is a diet and it's essentially a lower carb diet. And this is because we are putting a cap on whole grains, we're putting a cap on legumes, we're putting a cap on starchy vegetables, and we're focusing only on the lower sugar fruits. The thing is, whole grains and legumes do not only help control our blood sugars, they are also cardioprotective and they provide tons of fiber for overall gut health. And by limiting the types of fruits that you're allowed to have, it reduces that variety of nutrients that you're that you're going to get. The pagan diet is also technically a gluten-free diet because you're avoiding gluten containing grains. And even though there are some really good high fiber choices out there, you can still be missing a few choices. For example, really good high fiber gluten containing whole grain breads. Yes, there are some people who are actually going to be harmed from it, AKA those with celiac disease, 
um, and there are those that can be sensitive to gluten but unless you are one of those people it does not make any sense to avoid gluten also with the restriction of dairy items you can have a risk for lack of calcium intake which is already um, a pretty big issue in the population overall i'm honestly not sure why almost pretty much every single diet out there has some sort of a beef with dairy that being said there are some products out there there are actually a lot of products out there that are um, non-dairy alternatives that are fortified with dairy for example um, those almond milks that you see or soy milks that you see those are pretty much 100% um, fortified by now finally with following the pagan diet because it is a diet even though it can be long term with those restrictions can come a risk that can damage your relationship with food so what is my recommendation regarding the pagan diet well it's really just to take away the positive part which is the increased focus on fruits and vegetables and an easy way to do this without all those specific food rules is just to include half your plate filled with non-starchy vegetables at your meals and also include one to two pieces or one to two cups of fruits per day. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please give a like and subscribe if you want more content like this in the future. And until next time.